So we went from this to writing our own chatbot script in Python, eventually porting it over to Discord bot, so we get replies from Discord. In this video, I will do the following. Show you how to download the GGML models to use with Llama CPP, how to set up REST API with Llama CPP bindings to use these models, how to create a Discord bot application, and how to use the REST API in the Discord bot to make your own LLM bot. Before we even start, if you just want to play around with Alama or Vicuña or any other of the recently published models and chat locally with it, you don't need to do any of this. You can simply use one of the ready-made solutions like Text Generation Web UI uh, from Uga Booga, install it with one-click installer, download the model and have fun. This video explains how to set up any of the Llama models for REST API. That is, a universal HTTP API that can be used by any other app or script like in this example, by a Discord bot. The pre-requirement for this deployment is some basic knowledge of Linux, Python, and networking, specifically HTTP. However, you should be able to set it up locally when following along, even with limited knowledge about these technologies. You will also need to know how to edit text files in Linux. I'm using Vim, but use whatever you fancy, Emacs, Nano, any, whatever, as long as it edits text and you know how to use it, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to show all this within the Windows subsystem for Linux, Ubuntu. You will need either WSL or a Linux host for, uh, or a virtual machine for Ubuntu to follow along. This API server doesn't have to run on Linux, it will work on any OS. I'm choosing to do this on Linux because downloading all the required programs and packages and setting up the environment directly on Windows would be a massive pain. It's just much quicker this way. If you are on Windows like me, you can get WSL from the Microsoft Store. Uh, just search for WSL, it should come up on Windows 11. In case if you're running older version of Windows 10 uh, it, and it doesn't come up, you just search for uh, install Linux on Windows with WSL uh, on the Microsoft website. I'm going to start the Ubuntu terminal and install the prerequisites for this project. This pulls down the latest metadata from the Ubuntu package repository. And once it's downloaded, we need to install a few packages. In order, these are Python 3 Virtual Env, which will allow us to create separate virtual environment for Python packages for this project. Python 3 pip, which will allow us to install the Python libraries from PyPy. Curl, which we will use to interact with the API. And JQ. Uh, which will let us format and parse JSON replies from the API. Press enter. I already have these installed. Depending on your network connection, this may take a while. Another thing that might take a while to download is the model itself. Let's do this now so that it's ready for when we get to use it. Go to huggingface.co and find the model you like. You will need a GGML uh, model. This is the only type supported by Llama CPP at this time. You also need to make sure that it's the new GGML version as older ones are no longer supported. I will be using the wizardlm 7 b GGML model quantized by the blog. Specifically the 7 billion parameter 4-bit model as it will be quicker to load and get responses from. Pick the model you want from the files and versions and start the download. If you're directly on Linux host, then you can download it using wget. Right-click the download icon and copy the link. Then in the terminal, you can run wget and paste. If you don't have wget installed, I'm going to cancel this. Uh, you can install it with sudo apt-get install wget. If you want a better quality replies, look to get a bigger model like 13b or 30b. You can browse the available models quantized by the blog uh, keep in mind that the bigger model, uh, the more RAM you will need to run it. With all that out of the way, go back to your Ubuntu terminal and we're going to start by making a new directory for this project. We're going to create the virtual environment first and activate it. If you're not familiar with the virtual env, 
It's basically creating a directory within the project a local path for all the Python packages that will be used for that specific Python project uh, and they aren't installed system wide. And this helps with dependency and version management for the Python libraries. To activate the environment, we need to source the file within it. This part means that the environment is active. We will be using the Python binding for Llama CPP. The reason for that is that as of today, Llama CPP uh, and its bindings for other programming languages do not offer the REST API server. Uh, Python binding is the only one that comes with the REST server available. In the Llama CPP repo, uh, take note of the changes to the GGML format. This will impact which modules you can use. Uh, if the model you want to use was quantized before the shown dates, it will not work. Find the Python bindings in the description and go to the repo for the Appeltin uh, Llama CPP Python. Go down to the section for web server. It lists out commands to install the Python package and how to run it. The pip install command will not work out of the box on Linux because it recognizes the square bracket as a test command. This means that you will need to quote the package name like this. It will install all the dependencies for it and once it's done, we can start it up with specified model. Since we're using pip, let's also install a discord library and dotin library that we will use later. This will also install AIO HTTP as a dependency which we will need later. You can load your model directly from the downloads folder, but ultimately I would suggest you move it to some other location. For now, just load it up, grab the command from the GitHub page and also take note that it says we can navigate to the slash docs URI uh, to view the API schemas. If you downloaded the model with wget locally uh, into the parent directory, then you can just specify the file name of the model with dot dot slash uh, in front of it. If you downloaded it through your browser directly in Windows, then you can access it via the slash mnt. Uh, Windows drives are available uh, within the WSL under the mnt slash drive letter. So in my specific case, I have my model stored on the F drive. So I'm typing F. Uh, but I'm using tab for the completion of the path name. It will take some time to load the model. Once it's ready, it will display information showing on which port it's listening. Now that it's started, we can grab the URI and go to the docs. There are four paths available. The one that we are interested in is v1 slash chat slash completions. We can see the sample body for the request. We will copy it and use it in a second. For a successful response, we are expecting a JSON response, which we will take a closer look at in the terminal once we actually get a reply. Back in the terminal, let's split panes so that we can observe the server logs as we poke it. Change directory back to the same project directory. And we need the new JSON file with the request example that we copied. There are currently two message objects in this request. We will remove the system message as we will not be defining any custom outputs or modifying the model behavior. For the user message, we need to change the query string to match the prompt supported by our model. For wizard LLM, it expects three hashes response. This should also work for Vicuña and many other models. Check the description of your model to verify if your, yours is different. Save the file and we can finally start making requests. I will make some faulty ones to show you a few possible errors that you might see and um, what they mean. I'm using curl to the local host on port 8000 
with the v1 chaff completion path and I'm passing on the data within the payload JSON. You need to remember the add before. We can see the error message value is not valid dict. This means that input isn't correctly recognized on the API side and this is because we didn't specify the content type header. Let's add the header to this request and try again. Success! So it looks much happier but it isn't very readable. Um, we can pipe it to GQ to pretty print it. Now in the response we have uh, multiple fields. ID which is the API internal uh, field object which specifies what we were querying. Uh, timestamp in the Unix format when it was created. What model replied. Um, it's possible to have an alias for this model name. Choices, which is the most important reply for us, uh, I will go back to it in a second. Usage, which shows how many tokens were used for this prompt. So we have prompt tokens, the completion tokens and the total amount of tokens. In the choices, we have index, which is the um, number of the response, and the message with the role of the assistant and the content, which is the actual text generation. And our question was, what was the capital of Poland? And the answer is, capital of Poland is Warsaw. Okay, let's try something else. We will edit the request again, and this time ask something more creative. This time we're telling it to describe in detail what is large language model. Let's run the curl request again and wait for the output. Content. Sure, I'd be happy to help. A large language model refers, it cuts off the response uh, and it will keep cutting off messages unless we specify the max token length. By default, the Llama CPP Python server will set the max tokens to 16, which is enough for only very short answers. This is specified in the code over here, the Llama CPP server up max tokens default 16 we can provide this field in the body of the request to set it up to whatever we want for now let's specify it as uh, 512 this should be enough for a lengthy reply this number cannot be bigger than the context length which by default is 2048 now let's run the same query again, this time with larger max tokens. That looks much better now. And look, uh, we can learn about large language models from a large language model. How very meta. Sending requests with curl is not the most convenient way to interact with it. Before we start implementing it into Discord bot, let's first write a small script that will make it a bit easier to test. That is because there is one more gotcha that's waiting for us and also because we will be able to shift our code directly to the Discord bot itself. Let's open new clean tab, navigate to our project directory and create a new file that will contain our payload for reference. We will turn that request into a doc string uh, for now and eventually get rid of it later. Remember to activate the virtual environment, otherwise we won't be able to import the libraries. We will be using the AIO HTTP library. Their quick start example is good enough for what we need to do now. Copy the imports and the first example code block. We need to modify a few things. We want to send the put request instead of get. We want to send it to our local URL. We need to send our payload and our headers. So we first need to specify them. added the URL, the headers, 
And for payload, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the previously copied request and then remove the doc string. We also need to dump this dictionary as a string for the payload to be sent correctly. AOHTP doesn't automatically convert the data types. I added the import JSON and then specified the JSON dump S, which is dump string. With all that, we can try to run it and see if we missed anything. And of course I did because I don't know how to type, so I made a typo. Let's go and fix it. All right, fifth time the charm. Detail, method not allowed. And this is because I made a booba and this needs to be post, not put. Right. Again, it's taking a while, which is a good sign. And we have a response. We can now print only the relevant fields of the reply. And at the same time, uh, let's make it so that we can ask anything without editing the script itself. We can remove the status, uh, grab the reply, we need it as a JSON, we can grab the payload so that we can edit it and insert text into it, Let's paste it here, shift it over, let's add our prompt prompt uh, as an input user and then use the f string over here to replace it with our prompt now from that reply let's only get what we are interested in so the reply content it will be reply, and from the schema it was choice, choices, first response, uh, message, and content. Finally, let's print it and test it. Uh, Is cost user. What is the capital of Turkey? And we have a response that looks pretty good. That's cool, but it ends uh, after a single question. We want a chatbot, so let's make a chatbot. First, let's make it a bit more readable, so put that in an F string. Uh, Basis saying bot so that we know who replied, and now that we want it to repeat, we can put all of it in a while true loop so it will loop forever. Shift it over, and that should be a good beginning. Let's try that again. Try that again if I know how to type. Python chat. Okay, user. So now, what is the biggest city, city in Asia? Biggest city in Asia is Tokyo, Japan. What is its population? I'm sorry, I don't have information. What you're referring to? Please provide more context. Huh, that doesn't look right. Uh, this is the final gotcha that I mentioned. This model isn't following the context of the conversation. Uh, this is due to the API implementation based on the OpenAI model, which requires the full conversation messages to be passed in each post request. Uh, you can read the OpenAI API reference uh, for more details. They also show an example in Jupyter Notebook um, that shows how it's being used by their library. 
we don't need to use the library to handle it. So how can we do it ourselves um, for this bot? Simple enough, uh, let's just expand our uh, list inside the payload. First, let's move the payload out again. And now we only want to modify the message itself. So in the global scope, let's leave this as an empty list. And then inside our loop, we will specify that as a message. Uh, we need this after the prompt. Then this message object can be added to the list inside the payload. So payload messages append message. So as it loops, we will keep adding more and more messages to the list inside the payload that we sent to the API. Now at the end, we want to make sure that we're actually storing the message inside of the, 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 the prompt message inside each of those objects. Um, because we are adding it now without the response, uh, we will print out the message, but then if we pass this again, it will not have the context of what the bot replied with before. The easiest way I can think of uh, doing this is to find the message index in the list and then append the reply string at the end of it. So let's do message index. Message index. Content. And then we want to add our response or reply content. So now each subsequent request should be an ever-growing list. Uh, let's test it out. Count from 1 to 5. That should be simple enough for this model. And we crash. Because messages, because I cannot type again. Let's fix the typo. And then run it again. Count from 1 to 5. And again, another typo. You're probably screaming at the screen now. I'm glad I keep you entertained. Let's try it again and see if there's any more typos. Well, that's a rubbish response. Okay. Count from 1 to 5. Sure, count from 5. Okay, cool. Now do it backwards. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it does follow the context of the conversation now. Let's ask it a few more things. List five cities in Poland. Which one of these is the northmost? I'm sorry, I don't have knowledge about geography. Which city are you referring to? Yeah, this shows that you shouldn't really rely too much on the 7 billion models. They, they are cool to play around with, but they don't give great results. Um, we are at the point where this is usable in a Discord bot. So let's start setting it up. In your browser, go to discord.com slash developers to create the bot application. You need to be logged into your Discord account in the browser. I'm already logged in, that's why it didn't ask me for details. Click on new application, provide a name, agree with the terms, and create. In the general information, the name of the bot can be generic uh, because you will be able to give it a nickname in the server. Uh, you can give it a description and you can upload the picture for the bot too. I prepared one earlier with stable diffusion. Click save changes and on the left go to the bot settings. To get the API token for it, press reset token 
copy it and save it to the .env file. Adding token equals at the beginning. I'm showing this one here because I don't care about it. I'm going to reset it after that I'm done with it. Use all your own token, don't use this one. It's not going to work. Back on the bot configuration page, you need to change two things. First, I strongly suggest that you turn off the public bot setting. This will ensure that only you can add it to Discord servers. Second, you need to tick the message content intent. This will allow the bot to read the contents of messages. Click save. To add the bot to Discord server, you need to generate the OAuth2 URL. This is needed because you cannot invite bots to the servers and it will also specify the permissions that you want to give to the bot. Go to OAuth2 on the left, select URL generator and from the list of scopes, select bot. Underneath, you can specify what permissions you want to give to this bot. I suggest to start small and only give it access to text permissions. When you're done selecting the permissions, look at the bottom at the generated URL. Copy it and open it in a new tab. You can select server to which we want to add it. And when you continue, it will ask you again about the permissions. Once you authorize it, it will ask you to solve CAPTCHA. Solve it and you will be able to see the bot in your Discord app. Here you can right click on it and change the nickname. I would also strongly suggest creating a private channel for testing. Uh, as during the build you will probably test it a lot and spam people in your server with messages. My private channel is over here and then when I edit it I can see the permissions and add member. Cool, so now I have my bot over here. Back to the terminal, let's open a new tab. We can start writing our script for the bot. We will copy what we did for the chat script and we'll reuse most of it. Remember to change the directory and activate the virtual environment. Copy chat as bot py. Edit. We will use an example from a Discord repository, Discord Py repository. Go to examples, reply. This will be the base for our script. Copy all that and paste it into your bot.py script at the end. We will need to move some things around. Uh, the Discord import needs to go at the top. We can remove the original async io run for the main function. We can remove some of the comments and empty spaces. We can move the contents of our loop to the message content uh, reply from the Discord example. So let's get rid of that here. Uh, paste it over here. Align it. Uh, let's move the await message to where we actually reply and replace our print with it. Uh, we need reply content over here. We don't need the print anymore. We also don't need the main function anymore. We just have our client class. Most importantly, we need to replace the prompt input. This one here. Uh, with a message from Discord. We want to strip it and remove the exclamation hello command as well. Let's replace that with exclamation AI for now. Uh, and to get the message, let's do strip message equals string of uh, message content. I believe that's the correct way to do it with Discord. And then replace exclamation AI with nothing and strip. 
just to clean it up from any extra spaces. Now we need to adjust the prompt. Uh, instead of the prompt, we're using the script message. This should do for now. Uh, before we can run it, we need to give it the Discord API token that we just saved. We installed a dot .env earlier. And now we will use it to load the token from file. We will also need to import uh, the OS library so that we can actually read the environment variables of um, and specify our token. Token equals OS get env token. And then at the end of the file, uh, where the client is invoked, we need to specify that token. Let's save it, run it, and see what happens. Python bot. Okay, logged in. That's a good sign. So now we can go to Discord. Try to use it. So exclamation AI count to five. And we got an error. This is because I forgot to replace the message uh, variable names. All right, let's go and fix this. Uh, because Discord object comes with the message name already, uh, we cannot pass this message variable. Uh, basically, it overrides the object and creates a new dictionary. So instead of calling it message, we will call it prompt message not very original but that will do so we have to update it over here prompt message um from messages okay so prompt message over here and i think that should be it all right i think that's correct let's save it write it all right try to run it again it's running and second test ai Count from 0 to 5, because why not? And we got another error. How very exciting. Prompt message is not defined. Payload message, append prompt message. Okay, let's fix this. I think I got the typo in the real prompt message. Prompt. Of course, yes. You can see how good I am at anything involving computers. Prompt message. From, there's another typo. From message. Okay, there we go. Third time is the charm. Okay, logged in, running. Let's try again. AI count from 8 to 12. Sure, I can help you with that. Would you like me to know about the numbers from 8 to 12? Uh, that's not exactly what I wanted, but let's try again. AI count all the numbers from 1 to 10. Sure, has a number from 1 to 10. Wonder, okay, how can I assist you further? No, AI, now do it backwards. Sure, has the number from 10 to 1 in reverse order, 10, 9. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's try some other things. Uh, of course, I need to remember to include the AI. So AI. Same prompt. Yeah, I'm not gonna read that, but uh, it looks okay. I think we're pretty much done. Uh, you have a working Discord bot for large language model. So let's let's summarize what we did. We started the model. We prodded it with curl. So we went from this to writing our own chatbot script in Python. Eventually porting it over to Discord bot so we get replies from Discord. And this is where I will leave it for today. Um, you know, Go create your own bot, have fun with it, bye.